Hello everybody, this is Joe with GeoVision. Today I'm going to be going over the GeoVision Edge Recording Manager client viewing software. This is a free download from the GeoVision website and it gives the client the ability to remotely view both live footage as well as playback footage. There's no limit to the number of PCs this software can be downloaded onto. There is both a Windows-based version as well as a Mac version. Today we'll be going over the Windows-based version, obviously. Uh, the Edge Recording Manager software does allow you to view up to 32 cameras of live footage and one channel of playback footage simultaneously. There is a add-on that can be purchased which allows you to view up to 64 channels of live footage. That software license would need to be purchased for each PC that you want to be able to view more than 32 channels on. Now, with this software, you can have multiple sites listed in as your host list, as you can see over on the left, and you can have access to all of those sites, but you are only able to view 32 simultaneous channels at the same time. So this video will serve as an overview of some of the basic setup and features of the Edge Recording Manager software. So the first thing that I want to go over is adding a host. The most basic way to add a host is right here, the green plus sign. You can click here and you've got a few different options. You can add a VMS or GeoVision DVR slash NVR system. Um, the Edge Recording Manager can be used with both the GeoVision VMS platform as well as the multi-cam platform, which is where your cameras would record to. You can add a video server, which is a uh, analog device that allows you to bring analog cameras in to your system. You can directly add an IP camera. You can add our large-scale recording server software as a host. And then lastly, you can add the standalone NVRs that are Linux-based machines as a host. So I'm just going to go through a demo of adding a host right now. And you're going to click the first option, Add VMS DVR NVR. And you'll see this screen come up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is give the host a name. So I'm going to add our Fisher's office as a host here. And then you're just going to type in your IP address. And that's going to be, of course, your external IP address if you are trying to connect from outside of the internal network. You're going to put in your ID and password of the VMS machine here. And then you're also going to input any kind of port changes that you made on the VMS side. So in this particular application, um, this is what we changed here. And then the last important step that you're going to want to do is hit update information. What this is going to do is reach out to the VMS system and it's going to see how many channels that there are and then it's going to update to the list. Now the one thing that I do want to highlight is you are able to actually create different user accounts to where those users only have access to certain camera sets that you have given them privileges for. To do this, you're going to need to go into the VMS software or the multicam software and set those privileges. So if you're in the VMS software, up in the top right hand corner, you're going to go into the user section, password setup, local account edit. And when you're on this screen, you're going to want to go ahead and create a user. Um, you can just click on the user category, hit new. And I'm just going to use this one that I've already created. When you're on this page, you're going to want to click on the webcam slash mobile tab. And this gives you the ability to edit what this user has access to and the ability to change and, and alter on the system. So over on the right, you have a list of your cameras. You can then individually click the cameras of interest that you want that user to have access to. You can also give them access to audio if you would like. Hit OK. And then of course, when you're in the Edge Recording Manager software, you enter that username and password here that you created and that's going to give access to that user for only the set of cameras that you have given them access to. So again, hit update information. It's going to do a query. It's going to say successful. You hit OK. OK again. And then here is our Fisher's Office host added to our host list. Now, as far as bringing in cameras to view, um, you have a few options. Uh, on your host list, you can click on the plus sign, and it's going to give you the camera list for that location. You can either drag the camera list name into the first window and drop it, and then it's going to just put all of your cameras in. Or you can also individually drag cameras into where you want them to display.
If you want to reset your grid, you can just simply hit this close all video uh, icon with the X, and then you're back to a blank slate. If you want to choose a different matrix option, up here at the top you have some different uh, selections that you can make, uh, all the way up to a 36 channel, and then if you have the dongle, it'll give you up to a 64 channel grid. So again, we'll drag in our cameras here for the full view. Now, when you have your cameras in and you want a full screen, you just simply single click on that camera. It's gonna put it full screen and full resolution. And then if you wanna be able to zoom the camera, you can just take the scroll wheel on your mouse and start scrolling up. It'll zoom. And then you can click the green box in the bottom right hand corner to hold and drag to look around at your scene. Scroll back out. And then in your, you are in your full view single click again and you're back in your matrix view. Now, I also want to talk about de-warping fisheye cameras. You are able to de-warp 360 fisheye cameras through the GeoVision VMS software. When you full screen one of your cameras, you can just simply right click and hit Geo Fisheye and it's going to put it in one of the de-warped views. Now, there are four total views that you can put the fisheye camera in. With this one here, you have a full panorama at the bottom, and then two quadrants at the top that you can independently pan, tilt, and zoom. If you want to change to a different view, right-click again, go to fisheye option, camera mode, and then select the view that you're interested in. A couple other options that you have with the fisheye views, if we go back into the 360 view, you can right click and go to fisheye option and adjust auto pan speed. If you enable one of these options, you'll see your top left quadrant will do an automatic pan. When you're within this 360 degree view here, you can also enable object tracking. And to do that, you're gonna go down to fisheye option, 360 object tracking, hit check. You will then see this top right hand quadrant with a red box around it. And what will happen is as motion is detected in the region, that top right-hand quadrant will follow that moving object. If you want to exit the de-warped fisheye view, just simply right-click and then uncheck Geo Fisheye. To get back to your matrix, it's just a single click and then you're back in your full matrix view of cameras. Now, I want to show a handy feature called favorites. Let's say that you have a favorite group of cameras that you like to just always be able to quickly call up. You can create a favorites group. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to get your cameras laid out here on your matrix, how you like them to display. You are then going to click the favorites button and select the first option. It says add to list. We're just going to name this one Valdosta site hit OK. And then once you go back to your favorites, you'll see it is now listed there. And if you click on it, it would take you into that favorites group. As you see here, I've got several favorites saved. So let's say if I click on Fisher's office, we'll see that matrix come up. And then let's go again and we'll switch to the Valdosta site. And then we have that set of cameras. So again, it's just a quick way to be able to call up a set of cameras that you always want to be able to have ready access to. As far as playback footage, you have a couple options. When you're looking at a camera full screen, or even if you're in the matrix, you can simply right click on the camera and then hit remote playback. This will then bring up a window here. This is your playback window. Sometimes you'll see this little icon pop up. It says, please download to update the video codex. It's a good idea to go ahead and do that. For this video, I'm not going to, but you can do that. And in the top right hand corner, you're going to see your calendar with your months and your days. You can navigate to the day that you're interested in. Let's say if I want to look at November 5th, down below you're going to have time stamped motion events of all of the motion that occurred on that day. You can click on that particular time period that you're interested in, and then you'll start to see your video playback. Now, one useful feature that we recommend enabling when you first set up the Edge Recording Manager program is a feature that allows you to automatically play the next clip. So 
So you can right click on the footage and you can go to play mode and then right here auto play next five minutes. This will make it to where once the first clip is done it will then go on and play the next clip in sequence. When you find your footage that you're interested in, you are able to actually save and back up that footage. To do that, you can right click, go to Tools, and Save as AVI. You will have a window that should pop up right here. And in the first section, you can actually trim down your footage. Um, if you want to you know, shorten your clip, you can trim it down here. And what you'll want to do is go to the Setting button at the top. And on the first section here, this allows you to set where you want to save the video. So let's say that you want to put it on your desktop, for example. You can give it a file name. We'll just call this one Test. Hit Save. And then the last thing that you'll want to pay attention to down at the bottom is Codec. So if you click this drop-down menu, you see there's a couple options. WMV9 allows you to play this in a Windows Media Player or a standard media player whereas the Geo H.264 codec requires you to have the GeoVision software to be able to play back the video clip. So if you want to change it to WMV9, go ahead and click that, hit OK, and then the file will start to back up. Depending on the length of the clip, it could take longer, just depending on, again, how long the clip is. You'll see it merge, and then once it's done, it'll go to um, a completed status, and then that will be saved in the destination you put it in. This has been a basic overview of the GeoVision Edge Recording Manager software. For further information on our products, please visit us at www.geovision.com.tw/us. Thank you for watching.